So let's look at some do-it-yourself projects in the field of antennas and we'll look at the probably most famous one, the Cantenna, then a very interesting one, the Biquad, and a collinear omnidirectional antenna. The Cantenna um, was one of the earliest do-it-yourself antennas. Rob Flickinger built the first about 20 years ago now, July 2001. This video made July 2021. Uh, Rob Flickinger made a Pringles can antenna, which isn't the optimal size really, but it was the first very famous. Uh, it was a fun antenna and people liked it for that reason. The cost of making a cantenna, it's three, four, five dollars, something like that. You need an empty can of the right size. You need the connector, typically an N connector, and you need a bit of cable. That's the two parts that actually cost money. The can you could typically find for free. And mentioning Rob Flickinger here, this is myself with Marco Zenaro of the ICTP and Rob Flickinger, and we are shopping for oil cans it was actually so in this case we wanted this specific size uh, about eight to ten centimeter diameter and pretty longish antennas we had arranged with the cantina of that place to take the oil that we'd be buying because we wouldn't really know what to do with 50 liters of cooking oil but the Cantina could use it, so we shopped for these. We got the cans, the cantina got the oil, and we used these for the workshop. What can you expect from an antenna like this? You'll get something like 10 dBi's of performance, um, a relatively wide but directional beam, 60 degrees opening angle, something like that. And if you're a little bit trained in doing that, maybe not on your first one, but then one to two hours of building time, possibly. The instructions for this type, as many other types, one option is the, the green book, wireless networking in the developing world, but there are many, many other guides um, we also made one which is available as a video and we're showing you the link here. That is a step-by-step walkthrough making a cantenna like this from choosing the right can to all the drilling and dimensioning, placing of elements and so forth. The next one we have here is the biquad antenna. Uh, what this is is two elements, square elements, uh, positioned in front of a backplate, a grounded backplate. The cost is somewhat the same. And again, it's, it's the connector and the cable that will cost you money. The rest is time you're spending. The performance of this antenna is in the same league as the Cantana, 10 dBi, something like this. Here's an example where we built these types of containers into a box together with a an old Linksys AP, the one that I just showed you here, soldered together and then deployed in a mesh network. Actually, you see a combination here of an omnidirectional and a directional patch antenna built into one box used for a 13, 15 node mesh deployment over a whole town, city in, in Sangarema. The last of the antennas I'll show you is the collinear antenna. This is a way of building an omnidirectional antenna from two or four elements. You get five, seven dBi's. Maybe a bit my personal opinion, I've never been a huge fan of building these because they're quite difficult to get precise enough. And the moment you're working 
not precise enough, they won't perform very well. The omnidirectional antenna is one where I personally would say rather buy one. They're relatively cheap than making your own. But if you have the precision, you have the time and you have the ambition to do it, they're absolutely possible to build.